Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. After Iowa and New Hampshire, the Democrat frontrunner Biden is losing to a homosexual mayor and a cranky socialist. President Trump says don't punish prayer and don't tear down crosses, and communists are now ruling in China's pulpits. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. The once front runner for the Democrat nomination for president is now losing horribly in Iowa and New Hampshire to a homosexual mayor and a cranky socialist. One News Now reports that Bernie and Buttigieg have formerly had uh, not the front runner status, but now they are winning with the far left vote in the Democrat party. And of course, they are beating the longtime front runner, Joseph Biden, who finished far behind them in the confusing Iowa caucuses that were screwed up by Democrat bean counters. And their hated nemesis in the White House, President Trump, got his expected acquittal from the GOP-led Senate. The first in the nation caucuses in Iowa concluded last week, Monday, without declaring a clear winner immediately due to unreliable technology, a broken app that was supposed to count the votes, counted them three different ways. So they went back to a paper ballot. And though the Democrats found a way to blame Republicans for their allegedly clogging up phone lines. But by the end of the week, the Associated Press reported there was no clear winner. In what sounded like a walk into a bar joke, (laughs) there was a homosexual city mayor, Socialist, some say communist, who is not even a registered Democrat, Bernie is an independent. And they found themselves in a virtual dead heat after the caucus results finally trickled in. According to the Associated Press, Pete Buttigieg led Bernie Sanders by a thin margin, 0.09 percentage points, virtually a two-way split in Iowa, after 99% of the state's precincts finally reported. Biden at the HRC dinner finished fourth in Iowa behind Senator Elizabeth Warren, which news website Politico called a shellacking, especially after Biden had led in national polls for months, as One News Now was reporting late last year. Next up for the Democrats is the New Hampshire primary, but even there, it looks like Buttigieg and Sanders in early reporting are coming out way ahead. Biden could finish as worse as fifth in New Hampshire. Tracking poll of 500 Democrats shows uh, Biden and Warren, but also when asked about the polling numbers favoring Buttigieg, Michael Clark of the uh, American Family Association of Indiana said he is quote, a little bit surprised by Mayor Pete's performance, but he also had the past month and a half to spend in Iowa, whereas some of the other candidates had to be in the Senate during the impeachment, end quote. According to Politico, Biden's campaign team was floored by the Iowa results. Biden himself called it a sock in the gut. Even though the front runner, Biden, had slowed hiring and stopped running campaign ads due to lack of campaign funding. The campaign blamed its Iowa field director, Adrienne Bojan, who reportedly had warned about a dysfunctional campaign, but was ignored, the news website reported. Clark predicts, quote, I think this is going to be a cloudy field for quite some time and nobody's coming out of Iowa very strong, end quote. And that's the news. Our thanks to One News Now for that report. Or as Saturday Night Live spoofed the New Hampshire debate, President Trump was the winner of the Iowa caucuses. And 
the Democrats were in such disarray. I think one thing, one time Trump tweeted out, uh, if they can't, how can they expect to run the country when they can't even count the votes of their own caucuses? Another Facebook meme had the Sesame Street character, the count going to Iowa to help the Democrats. One, two, three, and, and eventually they got it right. Eventually their delegates have been delegated. It's gonna be crazy going into the Wisconsin Democrat National Convention where they predict now, if there is no nominee, it could go to a floor vote. It could be a contested convention, which they haven't had, I think, since the 1960s or 70s. Uh, and that really causes a lot of disarray, a lot of confusion, and Michael Bloomberg could be the one who comes out smelling like a rose because he's got all the money for the states after North Carolina, South Carolina, after Florida, after Nevada, and he is spending money, billions of dollars he has budgeted to run for president. Can Bloomberg overcome his lack of being a candidate early in the race? All these things are difficult, of course, we encourage you to follow the scriptures. Deuteronomy 1 says this, we are to choose wise, understanding, and knowledgeable men or women from among your tribes, and I will make them heads over you. God is looking for leaders. And right now I don't see it happening in the Democrat primary. Let's take a moment to pray. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name. As we discern in each of these candidates moral flaws that can only be corrected by Christ. And Father, we pray that every one of them will repent and turn to God. Every one of their supporters will repent and turn to God. That we in, on the right will repent and turn to God. That our nation, Father, will be a holy nation called by you with godly leadership at every level, city, state, county, federal, in every state across America. We pray this blessing in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, President Trump's State of the Union says we're not gonna tear down crosses. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How can you discern the thoughts in your own mind from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit? or from angels, or from invisible demons. We've created a 17-part video Bible study on a four-disc DVD set. This important Bible study series goes through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did Jesus discern the spirits? How did the Apostle Paul discern the spirits? What does the Old Testament say about demons and the Holy Spirit and angels? We're offering a discount today while supplies last it used to be $99. Now it's just a suggested donation of $50. You get the entire four disc set and you learn how to discern the Holy Spirit, angels and demons, every mention in the Bible. Call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website or write to the address on your screen. You can learn to discern the spirits. Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps and I wanna make available to you a new resource, a four part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and get this important video resource for your family defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from LifeSite News, who reports that President Trump in his State of the Union address, as you saw his speech, I mean, what a memorable speech, honoring a 100-year-old veteran, promoting him to Brigadier General, 
honoring Rush Limbaugh, giving him a, a Presidential Medal of Freedom. But most importantly, perhaps, toward the end of his speech, he said, we defend religious freedom, we don't punish prayer, and we don't tear down crosses. President Donald Trump pledged his administration will continue to defend religious liberty as part of his reasserting the culture of America freedom, American freedom in his annual State of the Union address. Here are some quotes from the president. He said, with every action, my administration is restoring the rule of law and reasserting the culture of American freedom, have confirmed a record number of 187 new federal judges to uphold our written constitution. My administration is also defending religious liberty. And that includes the constitutional right to pray in public schools. In America, we don't punish prayer. We don't tear down crosses. We don't ban symbols of faith. We don't muzzle preachers and pastors. In America, we celebrate faith. We cherish religion. We lift our voices in prayer and we raise our sights to the glory of God. To conservatives, judicial nominees have been a highlight of President Trump's presidency, with most of his picks greatly pleasing to pro-life and pro-family advocates. Religious liberty has also been a priority of his administration. From lifting the Obama administration's conception mandate, you know, Obamacare forcing Catholic nuns to pay for abortion coverage, also establishing a White House office tasked with fielding the concerns of religious Americans and monitoring threats to religious liberty whenever they arise. Last month, the administration released a guidance affirming students really do have the right to pray in public schools. Earlier in his State of the Union address, Trump called on Congress to ban late-term abortions. He declared the following, quote, we must all agree that every human life is a sacred gift from God, end quote. And that's the news, or thanks to LifeSite News for that analysis and recap of the State of the Union Address. You know, I happen to have been busy last Monday night, I missed the first time around, but did you know Fox re-ran the entire State of the Union uh, at 1 a.m., and I think I stayed up till 3 a.m. watching it, fascinated fascinated with the dynamics, with the optics, with Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, tearing up the president's speech as a sign of disrespect. At the same time, the very next day, he was acquitted by the US Senate in a 52 to 48 vote. Only Mitt Romney voted to convict and remove President Trump in the Republican Party, who was the, no Republicans in the House, only one Republican in the Senate, all the Republicans standing with Trump Almost all the Democrats, even Doug Jones of Alabama, voting against President Trump setting up the election. They're throwing it to the people, aren't they? They are letting you discern the spirits. And what do we discern inside of a man of God who now claims to follow Christ, honestly? Trump, as James Dobson called him, may be a baby Christian. He may have a sordid past. Uh, and yet, in his policy, can you see what he's doing? We don't tear down crosses. We don't ban acts of faith. We, we don't ban prayer, not even in schools. He repealed an Obama era executive order that would have threatened religious charities. You can't receive federal funding for your charity unless you become secular and atheist. Trump repealed that. Now Christians have a level playing field to compete for those federal dollars which go to uh, hunger relief and, and hurricane relief, things like that. Christian churches can now qualify without becoming atheist in the process. President Trump is defending you and your religious liberty and holding California to account, saying no abortions with our taxpayer dollars. He's defending Christian conscience. Another word for that is liberty, as the Bible says this in Galatians 5. Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not become entangled again with the yoke of bondage. 
This election is about liberty or bondage. Don't become entangled again when you vote. Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we throw off the spirit of bondage, the spirit of oppression, the, the executive orders from the previous administration that were limiting the religious freedom of our troops, of our chaplains, of our charities, of our churches. We throw off the yoke of bondage and we choose liberty. And God, we discern the spirit of liberty inside of President Donald Trump who is advocating and even legislating and ordering that liberty be established. He is limiting the government the same way the Constitution limits the government from imposing atheism upon your people. God bless him as he blesses us in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. While you come back, over in China, there are churches, but the communists are now leading from the pulpits. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you, a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50, and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30-day prayer manual, How to Liberate the World in 30 Days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or write to the address on your screen, or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our last story also comes from One News Now who reports that communists, the official government party, are now taking over the Chinese churches and preaching communism from their pulpits. Chinese Bible China, CUV, it's a charity over there, is making sure it controls the church. I'm sorry, the government is now controlling the church in China by taking measures to ensure that all churchgoers, instead of hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ from the pulpits, they hear the message of communism from the pulpits. Well, who'd wanna to go to a church like that? But the government of China in turn intends to make the church subservient to communism with brand new rules that went into effect over the weekend. Church members and their pastors must now bow down first and foremost to communism or they could face punishment for the smallest infraction. Bryn Lawrence of China Aid reports the following, quote, one of the most common charges we see against pastors is subversion of state power. So they're charging the pastors, right? So I think if, this, if these things go into practice, people who don't openly support the Communist Party could be accused of subversion of state power, even when that's not really the case, end quote. So being silent about communism is punishable. You've got to praise communism if you're a pastor in the pulpits over there. 
The government had previously planted communists in church services from time to time. You know, maybe a spy in the back row with a tape recorder, make sure they don't say anything negative, but now they're going even a step further. The pastor must say something positive about communism every time. And it will now be a common practice every time church members meet. Lawrence with China Aid asserts the following, quote, they definitely put communist spies in these churches. As a matter of fact, even for a little while now, some of the official churches have had two sermons. One will be preached by the church's pastor and the other will be preached by a communist party official. And that second sermon is basically communist party propaganda, end quote. If the pastor doesn't allow that guest speaker to share the pulpit with him, then the pastor is accused of subversion of the government. The crackdown on churches is now intensified. For example, three women were arrested recently and two were sentenced to prison for the crime of taking up an offering during a church service. Now even Christian funerals are illegal with police halting services and even arresting participants. China Aid sees the situation as a call for Christians worldwide to pray for the people of China and the faithful in their churches. And that's the news. Our thanks to One News Now and China Aid for this report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. In this story, we have human actors, right? We have Chinese pastors trying to lead their flock. We have Chinese Christians who come to church. We have government officials in China. They're, they represent the Communist Party. Sometimes they show up at church and take a speaking role. And now there's this policy of punishing pastors. So the, the government in Beijing is issuing the policies and there are even police who break up funerals. Those are just the human actors in the story. Where are the spirits in this story? How can you discern the non-human spirits like the Spirit of God, the angels, the demons, that interact with and sometimes work through the people? You can discern them, we have learned, through a biblical lens of morality as it influences the human morality of the human actors involved. So for example, let's say you're a Chinese policeman and now you're Given these instructions, here's a policy comes down from Beijing, you've got to break up Christian funerals. Well, as a Chinese policeman, you have two options here, right? Maybe the Spirit of God is speaking to you, Mr. Policeman in China, to say, let them have their funerals in peace. Let them show love for their departed loved ones. Let them respectfully bury the dead without government interference and give them religious freedom. I think that's what the Spirit of God would say to a policeman in those shoes. But here is the other voice on the other side, right? And maybe it's coming from the government, but maybe it's coming from a demonic spirit that is whispering to him, use your baton, go and beat those Christians as they try to pray. Break up their funeral procession and impose violence upon a peace-loving people, oppose religious freedom. Well, when the policeman listens to that voice and he wields that baton, he is manifesting not just the policy of the government, but a demonic spirit of violence and oppression against his own neighbors. And we rebuke that and it's time to pray. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray with the Chinese people against the demonic spirit of violence and oppression which is coming into their churches, into their sacraments, into their funerals. Father, we pray that the demons inside of the government representatives would be silenced and would cease their oppression. In fact, we pray for their conversion, that they would see the love of the Christian people and they would choose to follow Jesus Christ so that all of China may be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. I even demanded my own misdemeanor court martial 
And finally, Congress agreed with me and reversed the bad Navy policy. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign that petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please visit PrayInJesusName.org and sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. I'm Dr. Chaps. You know, some people are worried that we're losing our country, but they ask, how can we take a stand? We have produced now these two effective resources for you a DVD video series and a book. Yours for a suggested donation of just $50 and we will offer you four videos on this disc to teach you how to become an effective Christian activist. For example, how did I send five million petitions to Congress? How did we organize and change bad laws or policies in 13 states? How did I run and win a seat in the Colorado legislature? We will also offer you this 30 day prayer manual, how to liberate the world in 30 days. They're both yours for a suggested donation of just $50. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org or write to the address on your screen or better yet, pick up the phone and call us at 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. You can learn the easy steps to take back your country. Call us today. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching and God bless you as you give faithfully and financially to our nonprofit charity, PrayInJesusName.org. Click on the monthly recurring pledge sponsor at PrayInJesusName.org. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 16, every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God, which he has given to you. If you need prayer today, call us at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. I'm Dr. Chaps, I have two exciting announcements. For those of you who found us maybe one day a week, did you know we're on five days a week with in-depth analysis and Christian news reporting and we pray the news. Where else are you gonna see that? Here's the exciting news. We're now on Apple TV. We're on five days a week on this exciting new streaming platform, Apple TV. Maybe you've already found us on Roku or Amazon Fire, but Apple TV, look for PIJN News in the spirituality category. And here's my other breaking news. Did you know we're also on podcast? Well, what's a podcast? Well, you can listen to us five days a week on audio, maybe when you're working out at the gym or driving in your car. You can watch the video on your smartphone. Visit iTunes and look for PIJN News. We're also on 10 on-demand platforms. Visit PrayInJesusName.org to find them all. And did I mention it's absolutely free? Other people charge a fee, but ours is free. Subscribe today to PIJN News. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.